have a fantastic guest today. Do you we do. Talk? We have with us today Dr. Michael Sullivan, MD, and I love to the second Tuesdays. We always have such interesting guests, and we welcome Dr. Michael Sullivan, who's an endocrine surgeon. Right. Our subject today is thyroid cancer. Yes, ma'am, uh, and thank you both for the opportunity to be here today. Thanks for being here. Well, we'd like to hear how you got here. Uh, you told me you're a Jersey boy, so we want to hear about that too. Absolutely. So I was uh, born in Burlington County, New Jersey, and the youngest of uh, three children, uh, so bringing up the rear. <laughs> uh, I did my uh, undergraduate education at Princeton University, so local and again here in Jersey, uh, and followed that with my medical school education at Robert Wood Johnson uh, just down the road. Um, I moved to, um, um, to uh, New Haven, Connecticut for my surgery, uh, seven year surgery residency at y Yale University, mm -hmm. and followed that with a one year endocrine surgery fellowship at Harvard University. And are you actually I at Jersey Shore? Or are you, you go around the state or what, uh, to absolutely. the various campuses or what? So we have a, what we call the Center for Thyroid, Parathyroid and Adrenal Disease that's based at Jersey Shore uh, University hmm. Medical Center. But we've Did begun- Did you know that? Did I know that? Absolutely. We have a, a wonderful team in place there and we have begun an expansion project sort of uh, in conjunction with the growth that's going on within the health system as a whole. So I now have offices in Old Bridge uh, at the uh, facility there, at Raritan Bay Medical Center, and I also have an office in Holmdale uh, to provide care to patients in this sort of riv Riverview uh, lo uh, local community. So we have a, a sort of a multidisciplinary program that we have in place, uh, which is really unique for the area uh, and em employs uh, physicians from different areas in order to deliver uh, specialized and um, streamlined care for individuals uh, with uh, diseases of the, either the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland, or the adrenal gland. And to do this, we have uh, healthcare professionals who work uh, together. So uh, in certain instances, there are individuals like myself as surgeons, but we also partner with endocrinologists in, in the community, primary care physicians. Uh, and then we have a team at Jersey Shore uh, that can, um, can focus on different aspects of patient care. So we have pathologists that we work with, geneticists, uh, we have uh, social workers, we have nurse navigators. So really a, a huge team of individuals. We like multiple disciplinary. Yes, yeah. we're, both so, we're both social workers. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think it, it really makes a difference for the patients both because mm -hmm. uh, it allows them to, uh, to have uh, all aspects of their care focused mm -hmm. upon at one time, mm -hmm. addressed concurrently, uh, but also allows uh, us to do this in an expedient fashion, allows them to, to really streamline their care so patients uh, you know, can, can come in at one time and uh, sort of do one-stop shopping. How prevalent really are thyroid issues? Absolutely, so they're uh, rather common, especially among individuals of uh, middle age and higher. Uh, and we see uh, thyroid problems that, that uh, you know, are um, sort of come to pass at uh, f people of various life stages. Um, thyroid disorders come in two forms, so we see them really in, in, in two manners, one of which is if the thyroid gland is producing too much or too little hormone. Uh, so many patients, uh, uh, you may know, have an underactive thyroid for which they take a thyroid pill. We also see uh, thyroid disorders related to the size of the thyroid gland, so sometimes patients' thyroid glands can grow too big or develop what we call nodules. Uh, and so either one of those two, two uh, issues would be uh, reasons for your uh, physician to uh, begin to explore um, medical care. What are some of the symptoms that somebody might experience if they were having thyroid issues? Certainly, so I usually tell my patients to, to think of thyroid hormones sort of similar to caffeine. Uh, thyroid, the thyroid gland is important for uh, digestion and metabolism. So patients who have an underactive thyroid tend to feel very sluggish. They report that they have unexplained weight gain. Um, they may be constipated. They, everything sort of slows down within the body. And just the opposite for patients who have hyperthyroidism. They tend to get anxious. They are jittery. Uh, they may not be able to sleep. They have sweats. They lose weight. All these sort of symptoms. And so sort of uh, the, mm -hmm. caffeine is a nice way to sort of think about yeah, that, that as a corollary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, other patients. Uh, develop symptoms related to the size of their glands. So if you imagine there's only so much real estate inside your neck, as the gland grows bigger, things tend to get pushed out of the way. And mm. so some patients tell us that they have difficulty swallowing or perhaps mm. difficulty breathing when they lie flat. They feel sort of a pressure on their neck. Mm. Uh, mm. Other patients notice a change in the quality of their voice uh, or even a cosmetic defect. Perhaps they have a lump there that didn't seem to be there in the past that uh, is bothersome to them. So what's on the forefront of research in this area? What's, what are the new things that we can expect in this field? Absolutely. And, uh, there are a couple things that we're looking at right now in terms of uh, uh, thyroid disease and thyroid cancer. Certainly we're uh, trying to develop more 
uh, accurate screening tests. So for example, when we biopsy a, th a thyroid nodule, it's not uncommon for it, the results to be indeterminate, meaning doesn't necessarily look That's normal, right. but doesn't necessarily look like cancer. And then we have to guide the patients in terms of what we recommend, how aggressive to be, knowing that the ultimate result may be that there's no cancer there. And so one of the really uh, interesting areas of, uh, of uh, thyroidology is trying to develop tests that can either look at the patient's genes or look at their DNA in order to figure out whether a nodule should be, uh, whether we should think about that nodule as being mm. more or less aggressive. Mm -hmm. We're also coming up with all, uh, all kinds of new treatments uh, we can tailor to individual patients, uh, things like chemotherapy or other regimens, should a patient have more aggressive thyroid cancer and require treatment. Uh, the nice thing is that because the outcomes are so good that, uh, that you know, in a way, if it isn't broke, we don't have to fix right, it. Right, right. <laughs> right, so the majority of thyroid, patient, thyroid cancer patients do so well. Uh, and so we, we continue to, to, to tweak our understanding of thyroid cancer and improve our ability to deliver care to patients uh, with the knowledge that, uh, you know, we're very lucky to have, uh, you know, wonderful success rates thus far.